So yeah, let's get into it. Now the first thing is is that remember I took the topper off, um, which had the you know the winner winner lights, uh, and of course that would have been for a, a proper Sega versus setup, which is not in this machine anyway. So we did take that off previously, but just so that you know, if you do have one, it's really easy to take off. There's a side diamond piece on here, and I believe there's a screw or two screws underneath that, or on top. I think it's underneath. Take those screws out, that diamond, um, diamond. it's really a triangle, comes off the side. And then you've got then the winner plates on each side that sort of roll over the top. And there's basically two screws on, on top of the winner plates. You take those off and then the, the winner plates come off the, uh, the top of the unit. And then effectively you've got then the main metal unit here with all the lights in it. Uh, and that metal unit is held in by four bolts. Um, and the only thing you do there is once you've unscrewed those bolts, I just screwed the, the uh, bolts back in there so I wouldn't lose them. Um, but once you've unscrewed those, then you just lift up the unit from this side to get to these two cables. And this will be the cables for the lights and um, uh, the winner uh, flashing unit um, in there as well. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's how you take the top off and then effectively you get to this stage. And from here, we would normally have some screws on here. Mine didn't come with any anyway um, when, I, when I got it. Um, so we should be able to take these front fascias off. Before we do that, we'll just need to open up these panels. Have a look inside here, guys. And you can see the myriad of wiring that we're gonna go through and talk through. Um, but yeah, once that's off, you can also see that there is uh, screw holes here normally, and there's none in here at the moment. So this is actually just loosely sitting there with those screws missing, those four screws. So I should be able to just uh, take that off. There we go. And of course it's going to be exactly the same for the other side. Here's the beast of a screen that we'll be getting out later. Oh, lots of fun with that. <laughs> okay, so now we need to sort of work out the wiring. And so what I want to do is keep things relatively intact so that when I transplant it across to the bus, I know what I'm doing. And it always looks like a bit of a dog's breakfast in here. Um, it's just a matter of working things out logically. Um, it's normally a little bit more simpler than it first looks. So I guess the, the first complexity we have in here is we've got the card reader. And this card reader's got a couple of, a couple of wires. It's got this snake going over to here and into this board here. So some sort of logic board for the card reader. And then that goes off to this cable, which drops off down the back, um, down to the Namco 256. So we'll be able to unplug that from the Namco 256 and just pull that through and that'll keep that together with the card reader and we'll keep all that together on the control panel here. The control panel is just removed from these four screws, so we'll take all this off. In fact, the two screws on the other side, which will take off the whole hinge. Uh, so anyway, that's the card reader. Next uh, to the card reader, oh, actually, what was the other one we had here with the card reader? It's got this, this is what's that's probably some form of power. And that power, I don't know why it's separated because it looks like yeah, it's going through to the same yeah it's going through on the same harness so anyway that looks like it's probably yeah probably power all right so what else do we have here moving along we've got the main joystick uh, harness now this harness goes through to we look on the uh, pins here uh, on the plugs goes through to here and we can see that all that goes through to effectively the buttons and also goes through to the joystick. Now that goes through to the standard set of buttons and interestingly there's two cables there that aren't connected on my setup and I believe one of those relates to the third player button. I don't know what the other one is because just quickly on the um, layout of Tekken this is actually button one, button two, and button three is missing, and that would be your normal jammer standard. And then you'd have four, five, and six would be off a kick harness. So I would expect that one of them wouldn't be connected. I don't know why I've got two wires spare on the main harness. Have to work that out later. So if we look at the buttons, we'll see that a couple of these 
the second two, which is the yellow and orange ones, go off and go out underneath here and down the back. And that's because that goes down to the kick harness, which is on that uh, jammer board, I believe, down, down underneath. We'll look at that after. So we'll need to unplug that from that board and bring that one up. Uh, what else have we got? So that's the... Uh, that's all the buttons off the normal controller, the kick harness, uh, and that's it guys. Oh, other than that, we've got one earthing cable, and that earthing cable comes through to here. So, yeah, so it's really, um, we can unplug that right now, so we can get started on, on unplugging things. Okay, we'll do the same to the main control panel, or main controls. That's that out of the way. And so now we literally just have to pull through the, uh, the card reader and, uh, and pull through the kick harness. So why don't we go underneath and get those two disconnected now. Right, it's going to be a little bit tight in here guys, but we should be able to make do and find our way. And you can see it's quite a myriad of wires in here and a whole connection panel. Be a lot clearer once we get these monitors out where everything is going and the patch panel with all the power um, that's what i like about this unit actually the fact that all this is in here already can uh, hook this up into the sega blast later so we've got this jammer board on the side here um, and what we can probably do right now is we can take the main jammer harness and unplug that so let's get that guy off there we go and I'll be able to actually sort of pull this out once I get all this cables out of the way so that's the main jammer harness um, and you can see that the jammer harness actually goes up through into that um, that board and that board probably goes up and then to the both sides of the panel I would say and it's all a nice way to switch everything through none of that is labeled mind you but I'll be able to be able to find that off the uh, the jammer where all that's going. You can see the uh, the other power is all going off to the to the power um, over there, and then that uh, also uh, hooks off uh, elsewhere in the cabinet, which we'll have to find a bit later. So the other uh, one I wanted to find was the uh, kick harness, didn't we? we? Want to find the kick harness and the kick harness. I believe is this one and that goes into this plug up here okay we'll see that that's uh, part of it I think so hang on let me get in closer okay so yeah so that's the the kick and it actually goes off to the to the other end so that goes all the way down to the other uh, control panel for the other kick harness, so that's both of them. So I need to unplug the other one from player two as well, and then I need to basically remove this from this board. I'm gonna get this cabling out, hang on. Okay, there we go. So that's the cabling out. Okay, well while we're down here actually, I just wanted to follow this this one, which is the cable directly underneath. So that one there, I'll unplug that. Right, so down here there is a little there is a little board, this little board here, and that's where the card reader plugs into for this side. I gather this goes off for the other side. So Let's get this guy out of here and we'll be able to pull that cable through the top. Right, let me be able to bring this up now. There we go, it brings that through. So really we just got to sort out that last cable and of course it's joined with the other side so I actually think the way I'm going to have to get that off is actually unplug it from the uh, unplug it from the buttons instead seems it's joined to the buttons on the other side player two that kick harness so let's do that so we're just going to unplug this red one from here red and white and we're going to unplug the uh, the orange one 
And there we go, it's got the full... So those other cables would be for uh, the other buttons, I think. I don't know if that black is another earth that's just not being used or not. Not sure. But anyway, that can now go back through the bottom. And we now have everything off the control panel. So we can uh, take that off. So let's do that now. So everything's in twos guys, so we're going to have to take off the other panel too on player two side. So let's do that. Okay, and just to show you exactly the same layout here, exactly the same uh, configuration as the player one side. So again we need to get that cable out, we need to unplug the ground, get on the other side, you need to unplug. Now interestingly, actually we need to document this because it's slightly different on this side. Let me just get a light. Okay, so this side's a little bit different interestingly. So this extra cable here that runs through actually and powers the uh, it powers the the card reader. It didn't have that on the other side, so that's interesting. So anyway, we have seen that, so we'll unplug that. We'll work that out later why that's the case. And the power, the uh, the main controls, um, same same deal as before. Um, Yep, nothing really different there. So we can unplug that. And again, interestingly, that cable splits into this other socket. So that's really interesting, isn't it? Okay, well, we've seen that. So we'll take that off. We'll work that out later. And then the last one is uh, for that kick harness, which we'll have to pull through because it's shared, remember. So I'll unplug the two buttons. That'll allow that to go through, be pulled through now. And uh, we'll get that through, through the gap there. And back out the front. Okay, all right, I just need to get this one through and uh, then we'll get this panel off. First one is pulling out the uh, kick harness from the other side. There we go. And uh, now we can unthread that. A little bit messy here. So guys, you don't worry too much when you see all these cables in here. You just follow them one at a time and it tends to work it out and uh, doesn't look, isn't quite as complex as it first looks. Um, those extra black and white ones on the other side, uh, black and red ones on the other side threw me a little bit though. I'm not sure why they were connected the way they are, but we'll figure it out. So, take that out of there. That's the harness. So the next challenge, I guess, um, just from here, before we get that other side out while I'm down here, I um, need to sort out this and get this jammer harness out of the way because then we can actually pull this whole board out uh, anyway. Um, we'll be able to get to all that with the monitor out regardless, but it's an easy way to just slide out the, uh, the Namco system. So... The thing is, is that this jammer harness is hooked through <laughs> this patch panel. So we really need to take note and see 
which one's which before we unplug them. <laughs> so this will be more for probably my reference later. Okay, so I'll just find all the ones that are connected first. Okay, well first of all I just want to make a note, this was never connected, this, this little plug here. And that little plug goes Okay, it goes up to here. Um, now I say it was never connected, but it is, it is actually one of the wires is connected somewhere. Where is it connected to? Looks like it's connected part of the sound setup. So I believe this final one here is for the sound, because that follows through down to the bottom here to this plug, which actually says uh, sound in on it okay so and the sound actually never worked and I'm wondering if it's got something to do with the fact that all oh, this is on here and not plugged in I don't know anyway let's um, get this out of the equation it's part of this this part of this top one here which also flows through these cables here to the jammer harness. Okay, so I just need to make sure that I am aware that the top plug there has got all these colours there. Okay, let's take that one out. And it's gold on yellow too. Okay. I'll get that one out the way and perhaps we can get the other part of that out of the way too which is that one straggly wire it goes up to, to the sound take that out as I said that wasn't working before so I was using direct sound out of the Namco to my own set of speakers anyway and then the other part of that cable uh, it's all part of the one cable turns into this grey one and the grey one goes into the, the sound so let's pull that there we go it's I was sort of thinking I was going to leave a lot of this stuff in here but to be honest it's not a bad idea to take it all out understand it all put back the things that are needed you know keep out the things that aren't um, it's probably the best way. All right, so that's all. Let's have a look. Hang on a sec. Okay, I've sort of just isolated that, all those sound stuff, because I, I guess that's what it was doing, was tapping into the jammer sound. Um, and the way that we had this hooked up, I don't think the Namco would have actually sent sound through that out jammer. I'm not sure. But anyway, neither, either way, it doesn't really matter. As I said, I'm coming, I'm coming straight out of the Namco, out of the RS, RCAs on the back there. Okay, next one to pull out, these uh, part of the jammer harness, is uh, these ones here. And that goes to this plug. So th pull one down and out. Then we've got this top one, which looks very suspiciously like a monitor, RGB and sync. We're going down to the jammer harness as well. Uh, that guy can come out of there. And that one is situated there on the panel. Okay, now that's interestingly, it's split and I gather that would be split off for the verses off to the other end. So I would suggest that the cabling behind this plug um, will end up going off to player two. And that would be for RGB through the jammer interface. Now I'm actually using the, um, uh, for the Namco, I'm actually using the direct connection of the um, VGA ports because it's got two ports on the Namco unit and it goes straight off to the monitors, so I'm not actually using that anyway, but for any other system that's not VGA, it would be normal res or low res, uh, would go through, go through that 
RGB connection. Okay, and we've got the other one here, and I would suggest that this is the probably the Player 2 controls. I can sort of see how this is laid out now. I think Player 2 stuff's on the right, and Player 1 stuff's on the left, I guess. So that's how it's sort of looking, how it's shaping up. We also have this button here. I don't know what's that one likely to be. Is it the Player Start all on its own, maybe? Not sure why it's separated out, but that could be it. Um, that's that one. I don't think it would be actually. Hmm, who knows? But anyway, that's off the jammer harness too. And same deal on the other side. We've got this one off the jammer harness, and that's and that's it. The remainder go from the front here, which is interesting. Seems all these other ones came from the jammer harness in where these ones go to work to find that out all right so what do we have well we have one heap of jammer harness cables and this the only thing connecting this now is through to the power so it's getting the power supply power from here but this also branches off and into the cabinet so we're not going to be able to get the rest of that out until we get more of the cabinet apart i think so now we've got some more space we should be able to pull the uh the namco unit out here you see what's going on a little bit easier there we go and uh, in fact we should be able to pull this whole thing out let me just get that out now here we go and I know we we can get this out because I've had it out once before <laughs> when um, I was trying to work out what was going on with the CD-ROM drive when I first got it right so what were we looking for we were trying to find the the other connector for player 2 card reader. Now interestingly the player 2 card reader doesn't go straight onto this board like the like the player 1 did. So that's interesting right? Maybe that's why some of this cabling is different for that. But anyway the player 1 went on there. The player 2 looks like it comes from here straight into the unit and then the actual cable that uh, runs up to the um, control panel uh, is straight into the unit so that's interesting so let's take that out now we're going to be able to pull that through all the way through the back and then we'll be able to take that second control panel out so let's go do that okay guys so this cable seems to be lodged in the back here somewhere um, so we can't get this control panel off until we get the connecting piece off there so i'm just going to take the surround off so let's get that off so yeah guys you might have to get your uh, your head underneath the back here to get some of these cables out probably could get to this cable if i just took out the main monitor um but i just want to get this front panel off because it's much easier to take that monitor out without the control panel being in the way so let's just get under the back there and then we'll get this one cable out and then we'll carry on right finally got that cable out it was held in by one of these guys just around through the back so we had to get in and look under the back and pull it down and take off that uh, that tab that was stuck anyway that was just the only thing holding that wire so that's out so now we can uh, unscrew this side all right now actually just before we uh, take these monitors out I'll just move the get the Namco box out of here so we've got enough room out the front. And also just another note, something to note guys, those of you who have versus machines. If you want to adjust your monitor controls, I found the best way to do it in the short time that I had it up and running here is you take off this piece here and then you can actually um, you can actually remove this top plate, which we're going to do anyway, but I wanted to keep it sort of structurally sound. Uh, by removing these allen key bolts so there's just four of them then this whole top comes off and then you'll find that the actual monitor controls are completely accessible through here we we'll probably won't be able to see it we see that in there so you can see you could adjust uh, your red blue and green on the back if you find you know on the back of the neck board um, 
through that hole in fact well not through that hole once this top tab has come off this top unit you can get to it so yeah just something to remember because when I first got mine this screen here was a little blue so it was an easy way to get in there without actually having to take the whole monitor out right so to get this Namco separated we've just got a couple of things we've got our sound that's easy enough that is going to my my own little uh, 2.1 sound setup we've got the VGA connectors going to the monitors okay that's it those are out of the way and that's it now we can move this out put these cables back inside temporarily and let's now get the big job done which is getting these monitors out so I can get my sons to, to help me again because they are pretty heavy these big 29 inches and not light at all okay let's get set up for that so before we remove the uh, the monitors of course we need to discharge them so we will have to actually remove this top to do that anyway um, that's not the last piece of structural uh, <laughs> how this thing is being held together luckily you can see there's another piece here that's holding the monitor um, together with the cabinet so don't worry about taking this top off um, and the monitors falling down that won't happen so once we get these off we'll be able to then discharge the two monitors so let's just do that now one other thing guys you need to do is just when because this when you take this top off it's going to grab these wires here so you just squeeze these plugs to drop them through There we go. There we go, last one's out. And the top will come off. Okay, it's going to discharge the monitor. Both monitors, we'll start with the one. Discharge through to the frame. And I think the chassis actually discharge anyway. Uh, automatically they're fairly fairly new ones but just to be sure we'll uh, do it this way anyway yeah there's absolutely no spark there I'll do the other one Now remember when we took them out originally um, there was no spark then either right and just an another note for you versus owners is um, it's not a bad idea to do what I did there which is add a bit of just a bit of tape for those two cables that connect back up to the uh, the topper uh, otherwise they will fall to the ground <laughs> hard to get back up all right, so we've got the monitors discharged. Uh, now I just need to feed through the VGA cables back up so they don't get caught as we take the monitors out because you don't want anything obstructing the monitors as you've got them half out. That is a nightmare. So I'll make sure that those uh, cables are ready and free to go and then I'll get my boys in and give us, he can give us a hand um, getting these monitors off. So let's go do it. Of course we need to get the power cables disconnected as well for the monitor so for both sides so let's do that you don't want to be pulling through a monitor without the power cords disconnected so in here we've got this one that's providing our power you can see that actually just goes through to a double plug there and uh, that needs to be disconnected and there's also a daughter board hanging down which we need to make sure is clear and that's for adjusting the monitor control so we just need to make sure that there's a VGA cable that needs to come back up through with the chassis um, and the daughter board as well as this uh, other end of this power so I'll just unplug that and then we should be ready okay guys I normally put some gardening gloves on just to hold the monitor um, I'm gonna get this out with my my two boys 
Uh, but you do need to put these on just to protect yourself from the, the metal. It's a little bit sharp, that's all, and because of the weight of it, it's so heavy. Uh, what I'll do now, though, is I'll just get these four screws out and then uh, get Dylan and Mitch to help me uh, lift this guy out. They poured it forward a little bit. Okay. So let's just tip it forward. It, and then, and then um, we just need to try and walk it a little bit forward. Yep. So that's that side off, and you can get your fingers underneath it. Yep, get your fingers underneath it. Okay, Mitch, get the cable through. You right? Yeah, have, have we cleared? I it? got it. Something stuck. Okay. That wasn't Sorry, too bad. There was, was a third cable. Right, that's one monitor out, guys. Actually, it wasn't too bad in the end. It's definitely easier with two people. See one of my earlier videos when I tried to take out the uh, the same size monitor out of the Astro City at Half Kilby. Don't do that, guys. It's better just get get a mate, get a friend, brother, son, daughter anyone to give you a hand it's a lot easier all right we're going to push this thing forward and we will pull out the other monitor and then effectively we're left with just sort of the power supply you can see my 2.1 sound system in there and then we can dismantle these panels and you can see right now actually guys that why you can't actually split these units in half which would have been really nice if you could split them down the middle here but you'd have to fabricate a whole back section these two pieces are actually joined together um, and are structural to the whole unit so you can't simply separate those unfortunately and create two units okay let's get out the uh, the other monitor um, okay let's bring it forward Cables free, Mitch. Yep, I've got both. Okay, you got it, Dylan. No, I don't have it. Oh, there you go, got it. Okay. Right, well the next thing I'm going to move out is my 2.1 Logitech setup because that's just sitting in there. That was an aftermarket thing I obviously added and I couldn't get the speakers going so let me just get that out of there. Right, I got the speakers out of there so we're getting a little less. <laughs> a couple more plugs here, so these ones on the right hand side, I should have guessed these before actually, but uh, basically we've got left and right uh, through to the speakers. So that's easy enough, so we can unplug those two and, uh, feed it from these uh, connectors here okay these little connectors are pretty cool they just sort of bend out there we have it okay that's all free the same on this side Player one, player one, same setup. Which colour was left and which was right? <clears throat> so right was red, yellow is left. Hmm. Interesting. Inside the cable's been caught behind here. It's been caught behind there. Get that out of there. Go. Okay, let's free this cable. 
go guys what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around with the remaining cables I'm just going to get them all unclipped and anything that's being bunched up with cable ties I'm going to unclip all those um, just so that I can get everything loose and followed through so I can remove them all right so just give me a moment and I'll just go do that right with the last connectors on the control panel here uh, the first two were actually through to uh, video so that was passing through the red green blue and all the rest of it and of course that wasn't being used because we were running VGA so that's why um, we just had power coming out of this to the monitor but normally this would be um, connected through to the monitor for uh, your jammer out for your red blue and green and sync uh, and power so yeah so that's those two plugs so that's easy enough on both sides exactly the same and the last one out of the set is this one here and this one goes to a little board that's under here which has a little ribbon cable which goes down here now I suspect that this was for the um, um, for the for either counting the coins or just um, uh, a credit counter effectively I, I guess I'm not quite sure I need to go to get that board out to have a look so um, I need to remove that looks like it, it is cable tied in somehow or stuck in there so anyway I'll get that out and then that is the last one so I'll do the same on the other side and get that out and then I think we can actually take this whole plate off it gets connected with this screw and this screw and that'll take the whole plate which has got all the connections for the for the wires at the back alternatively I guess you could press these through but it might be a better idea to take this off and then that way I've got them all in the, the right order that they were in um, when we uh, took it apart so here's the other side play too you can see exactly the same as for the second monitor And again, same little unit down here. And there was nothing, yeah, down the other end there, so. Right, so I'm gonna take off these two screws here. That will take this panel off, and then that whole panel can go behind with the cabling, which is now somewhat looser. And then what I'm hoping to do, guys, is actually take off this whole unit here. Now, I'm not sure how it comes off, but having a guess, it looks like there's two allen key bolts here on both sides it seems to hold this whole frame i believe and that's i think that frame at the bottom um this one here is separate so hoping that once i remove those four bolts this whole piece will come out as one but obviously i've got to take this off first so that it doesn't catch with the cables so i'll go do that okay so unfortunately this is a square cut of uh through the metal here in the back so that um this whole plate oh yeah, there we go okay it's slid through on in i thought i might have to unplug it all to get it through but it looks like i might be able to slide the whole thing under and get it past the cables okay let me put this on the tripod see if I can get that through there we go and I got some little one caught there still which is on this unit so I need to get that off there that's stuck on there with some cable ties so I'll just cut those cable ties off Yep, micro coin. So yeah, some coin counter. All right, put that through there. That's the cables all through. Okay, now let's see if we can get this uh, this section off. Unscrew those four bolts and see if this whole panel comes off. It'd be good if it does. Ok, 
okay. Not completely. I thought this was actually two, two pieces, um, but it looks like there's some sort of seam weld in between here and this front plate uh, to take the front off. So it looks like I'm gonna need to take off these two bolts here and on this side, here's two bolts here. Okay, so I'll get those off and then I think this whole front piece will come off. Okay, now let's see if we can lift this out. Okay, seems not. Seems like, because this is can't be lifted in here so there are one two three four bolts here I think we need to undo those first or next <laughs> and see if that uh, takes the front away and then the rest can slide out, I think. I'll give it a try because it's not uh, definitely not releasing. Oh, there's two bolts. Ah, two bolts on the bottom too. So, is that holding that whole thing? Yeah, it is. So it looks like it's two separate pieces. I think the plastic comes away and then the metal piece comes out after. And it's just the way that this is all shaped around, around here. I don't think it can come out any other way because this plastic has to come away from this section. So yeah, guys, um, I've got to take out both. Yep, because there's a, there's a metal panel under this part. So that's holding it in there and that's holding in there, which is really why there's an L bracket there, I guess. So uh, I'll take that one out, that one out, that one out, and that one out, and then we should get this front piece off. Let's try that. Okay, that's that off. Is it any looser? <laughs> oh dear. Thing is put together like a tank. Well, actually I can see probably why. One thing after the other in terms of uh, getting this off. Uh, we also have this connected through to here. There's some sort of um, support. Um, yeah. So there's a. Uh, yeah, that's that one. Yeah, because that was the L shape. So that was the final two on the back of that guys i'll just bring the camera off just to show those a bit closer and we can see see there was that one there and then we had the l bracket that was holding it there and uh the same down there and then there's another one there and you can see when you look around the back that's where these are uh, welded in so that's the last two is that one in the corner and uh and this one there so I think that's it when we take those off it will separate this bar and then it should all come off <laughs> let's see really need a ratchet that's got an extension like this one otherwise you'll never get in here right is it free yes it is so look at that it slides out guys there you go <laughs> it makes a lot of sense I guess you slide it in and then bolt it up. It, made, it really made that nice and sturdy. There we go, one side off. I need to take this, uh, this door off. Now, the door's actually come off from the bottom. It sort of slots in. Um, but it's just held on top by these two bolts. So once that bolt comes off, then the whole door just lifts straight off. So I'll take off those bolts. We should get the front door off. Okay, that should lift, uh, lift off. There you go. The whole, whole door just lifts, lifts off the bottom. The bottom piece of the uh, of the door 
is this sort of metal pole and that metal pole just drops into the hole at the bottom of the machine and then it's the top piece that you screw on. Right, well now we've got all that off, are we able to take this piece off as soon as we've got that separated? So now it should come up and out I think, does it? Still stuck somehow. Right, well not quite as easy as all of that because uh, really you can't really get this up and out of here without this side panel sort of coming off. So what I think, because all of this is connected guys, all this, uh, all this metal through to here, um, bolted through to the floor, it's all connected and I think what we need to do is to get to it properly, we need to take these sides off um, because the sides will then separate away from these metal pieces allowing us to get uh, get them out so that's what I'm going to do now now I've already removed those two um, two here of course so there is uh, another one on the bottom there and of course we've got the one up here which is holding this together so we'll take that off take those bottom ones off and let's see if we can actually take off a side. You now the only other thing we need to do is, oops, we need to take off this support which is in the middle here. And I'm holding these two together. You can see that's the two plastic pieces there. And this actually slides up and off. There we go. So, I'll uh, take those off as well, and the screws will go from there. Okay, I might take these out first. It's free. It's all free, so if I take off this, the whole panel should come off. Let's see what happens. Oops, and it does. Here we go. Oh, uh, well, obviously that there by itself. So that means, yeah, we can get better access to uh, to take off those front pieces. So need to take off the other side. Okay, and the only difference on this side is we've got the uh, coin return. Uh, which goes down to the box there so that's uh, where this you know player two coin goes and it and registers um, or goes down into the coin box sorry and we can see that that's connected uh, to that side panel so I'm going to have to unscrew that from there and then of course uh, it'll eventually have to come off here as well and off the back of the coin box over there so let me unscrew that and then let me take this other side off Right guys, well that's those side screws are all out so you should be able to do the same thing. Lift this up and release the side. There we go. Easy as that. Right guys, well I'm going to go and repeat the process on the other side. It's exactly the same in terms of the components. So I'll get all those pieces off in the sides and then we'll get down to the, uh, the final remaining parts. So see you in a minute. So one thing I need to do on this last uh, side is to get this panel off, I've got to remove the, uh, the AC connections. So it looks like there's just four screws there. And uh, once I take that out, I'll be able to just put it on an angle and push it through the hole and then uh, we'll put it back here and then I can uh, take this whole side off. So I'll just do that now. Okay, get the rest of these sides off and then we'll get down to the last part. Right, well we're down to the last uh, trolley really. <laughs> and uh, I noticed that now that all the other parts are off, 
with those bolts, two bolts removed on either side that we took off earlier, we can actually just lift this off the side. There we go. And we can do the same on the other side. Like so. That makes it a little easier just removing the power supply now. And, uh, and really all the rest of it is just loose cable so just need to undo these um, undo the uh, transformer uh, these are slotted in through the back here so it's normally uh, some screws at the front um, yep and these ones probably these gold ones here holding that down so we'll take that out that'll all slide out and that's it really guys um, then all that cabling will just come out I mean we've got this uh, back panel here so I'll remove that probably can keep it all all connected but at the end of the day you might have to uh, take that patch panel off so yeah it's really just um, Getting all the cabling off here and the final few things that are screwed on. There's metal pieces screwed on here and, uh, and then the coin box. Some screws down the side there. So I'll just go ahead and uh, remove all that stuff. Nothing's too difficult down at this layer. I will say though that um, you can see that the whole tray is a single piece. So yeah, you can't split this up you would have to uh, cut that and then again have a backing and I don't think the back would you know you need it to be molded to come out around the outside of the monitor chassis um, so yeah really not suitable to convert into two singles unfortunately okay let me get all this last stuff off And just around the back of the coin box, guys, is these three. There's an earth cable there, and these two cables, which uh, would be for the coin counter, I'd imagine. So, yeah, I just need to remove those, and then uh, that'll get all the cables free. I can pull them all off, unscrew that transformer, and I think we'll have a clear base. <laughs> 